Now then, we've got this 1000 watt inverter, battery inverter, and it's supposed to be a 12 volt one. So let's just check it out. It's faulty apparently. So we'll just put these cables on this battery. That's the negative, that's the positive. And see what happens. Okay, how do we switch it on? So it's going beep as you can hear. So I've just got this light here. So uh, wherever the plug is, let's plug this in. Okay. And no, it doesn't do anything. Okay. That socket doesn't feel very good. No. I'll switch it off before we annoy absolutely everybody. Now, with these cheap inverters, you'd think, no, it's not worth messing around with. But, out of interest, you'd think, well, give it a go. We might learn something from it. I'm looking at these, this bottom here. Let's, uh, let's zoom in on that. So it is 12 volts. There's a tick there. And it's 220 volts output. And it's 50 hertz. Right. So, and I do have known that this did work. So oh, let's, um, we've got to have it apart obviously, either that or we scrap it. So how do we have this apart? Well, there are four screws on this end, and four screws on that end, and an earth. So let's have those screws out and see exactly what goes on. Okay, so I've got those four screws out, and th this um, socket looks a bit manky, but I can't actually see anything burnt at the moment. So this circuit board here is part of the on and off. So I'm going to undo the screws on the other end and see if this lot will slide out, although you might notice there, just in there, there's a load of hot glue, so that might have to be chiselled out of the way. I'll just go and um, unscrew the other end, which has got the power leads on which can come off and then there's four screws and we'll see what happens this end <coughs> I've just taken these leads off and look there's a lot of surface corrosion on them so I'm going to wire brush these up because it could be that voltage is getting through but insufficient current. That might be it, I doubt it, but we've got to work through the process of elimination. So let's just clean these up really well and then put it back together or just put these back on and see if the beeping stops. So I've cleaned those up I don't think this will do anything, but 
you can but try. Positive to positive, negative to the negative. What do you reckon? I reckon no. Well, it drew some current then. No. Switch her off. So nothing's happening there. So uh, let's get this end off. I know this has been used in quite a damp environment. Cool. So, and they're cheap. So, really, when you're using inverters off batteries the inverter wants to be sort of just to one side of the batteries and the battery shed itself doesn't want to be damp yeah. it wants to be ventilated but not damp these sort of things just tend to get latched together ah right we have the top off oh that's not bad right that top just sits on there excellent so can we see anything that looks adrift we're actually look, looking for burnt bits and burnt tracks and there's two fuses down there can we see just down there so I'll just pull those out and see if uh, either of those are blown they're 30 amps each. I doubt it, but you never know. Start with the obvious. So, where are we? That one's alright. That one's alright. So, I'm assuming these are in parallel. Because if this is a one kilowatt inverter at 12 volts, then the application of Ohm's law means that one kilowatt is 80 amps at 12 volts. So two times 30 amp fuses is only just enough. So in here, it looks like a load of FETs or transistors or something. And if there's a problem in there, then we can forget it. So it's just a matter of searching. See, even these capacitors, they don't look they don't look bad, the ends aren't bulged out 
just trying to find something that looks like it's burnt. That there looks like a heat sensor and that is heat transmitting um, compound so that's a heat sensor of some form that was in there I can't think it would be anything like that Because sometimes it's just like a dry joint or something like that. We'll have to um, investigate further. But it looks like... Where are we? The hot glue up here, just behind there holds this whole circuit board into this aluminium so it looks like it just slides in so if you're able to chisel that away let me just show you if we can there you see this hot glue here if chisel that away we can get the board out of the case but so it's a matter of just hacking away at this hot glue anyway I've done all four other four corners so let's just see I'm doing it right at this corner here and not going too deep so I'm not destroying the edge of that there we go so let's have a look so I'm just going to clean this up because it looks like a load of old flux and mess and looks like things have got damp in the past just so I might be able to see something might have to get my OptiVisor out you know the, the one that Mr. Pete uses Tubal Cane we'll search through this lot but one thing that is interesting here, and I'll zoom down on it, is they seem to have updated all the tracks on this board where the power goes. They've uh, taken what looks like 2.5 copper wire and soldered it on. There you see, they put a bit of effort into that. And quite a lot of heat to update that but I will go through all these little joints here but nothing really springs to mind or to eye at the moment it's a bit rough isn't it I'm even looking for one of the connections that's not been soldered you never can tell. See that one there? Oh, there. That looks a bit like there's been corrosion around it. Anyway, leave that with me. So I've cleaned that up and I can't actually see anything where there's any burning. But one thing I have found and this makes me want to stop doing it, stop investigating this is all those screws there that hold those transistors or FETs or whatever they are on there they're all loose so none of them were connected to or pressed onto the heat sink
Where are we? Here we go. So look at this. So they're all up like that off the heat sink. So they'd get hot and they wouldn't be able to dissipate their heat. Look at that one. It's off at an angle like that. So I think there lies the fault. Some of those will be blown. Because they couldn't um, couldn't lose their heat onto that heat sink. So I think I'm just going to pack it in. Because if somebody puts a piece of equipment like this together. And doesn't do the screws up on one of the main components. Then it's a piece of junk. Um, I don't suppose we should expect any more. These people in China. They're on a they're effectively you know they're on a uh, a time limit these bits of equipment come whizzing past them they're supposed to tighten all the screws up in hardly any seconds at all and then on to the next one so you have got to feel sorry for them but that's the product yeah it will work but only for a short amount of time so i'm going to leave this here but it was interesting investigating it anyway. Uh, the way that it was put together, like a clamshell sort of uh, aluminium casting and everything slid in. And the fact that the soldering had been um, updated with little copper buzz bars, etc, etc. But then, you know, down to um, build quality, isn't it? Leave it with you. Cheers for now.